Alright guys, I'm assembling a CCM V-Race and I uh, started with the wings. Not much to go over, it's, this, it's a super um, standard installation, putting the servos in. Uh, you get pre-installed servo ROM and IDS frames. But there's a few things I ran into that I wanted to share. The first one is that the um, on my model the connectors that came installed for the wiring here they're kind of backwards um, the sleeve that goes over the plug I can just pull it off and you're not supposed to be able to do that they're supposed to snap on so basically just turn them around and align the bevels and then snap them in and then they're on they're on the correct way after that not a big deal at all okay the next thing is um, for the flap and the aileron here um, we'll start with the flap the horn that came installed here is the third horn on the parts tree and you get um, the horn with the kit for the IDS, obviously it's missing this because it's on there. Um, but for the flap, this horn is entirely too long. So I went down to the second horn from the end, so the second shortest, and I installed it in the other side of the wing, and I get plenty of travel. So there's no issue there at all. Same thing with the aileron. Um, the aileron comes installed with the second from the end here as far as the, the length of horn, so the second shortest. And on the other wing I replaced it with the shortest one and there's more than enough throw. So if you make those two changes and replace both the um, flap and aileron horns, you'll be able to use more of your servo travel and uh, get more resolution out of your servos and more power, torque, etc. So that's basically it. So I flipped this guy around too. And so this wing half is ready to be assembled. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Okay, so we'll just go over getting the flap servo in here. Um, I have my X10 Mini and I have a new uh, horn or arm and again it's the second shortest on the tree here so I'm just gonna get a little bit of grease you can use Vaseline or chapstick or whatever I'm gonna put a little bit on the threads of the or the spline of the servo and then I'm just going to try to line this up or get a feeling of where it wants to sit and once I kind of feel that I'm gonna go ahead and push it in okay it's pretty firm so the grease kind of helps it along and once it's on I'm basically just gonna remove it okay and I'm going to do that about five more times, pushing it on and off. And that's just going to help me with the installation, make things a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to do that a few more times. I'm going to go ahead and get the horn that's installed out of here. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull the pin and I think side cutters are the best for this to grab the pin and I like to get a flathead screwdriver and just kind of get it behind the horn and you can use it as a wedge to help yourself wiggle this out don't force it just go slowly If the bearing comes out with it, that's fine. You just have to put the bearing back in. OK, 
Okay, so the old one's out. And you can save that. Might need it later for some other model. And the bearing kind of came out, so we'll just kind of push that back into place. Like that. And then we're going to remove the screws. And uh, recently Servo Ramen has switched to Torx, which I actually prefer now. So you'll need a, a T8 Torx and a T6 as well. So we'll pull the screws out. Get that back brace out as well. Okay, so I'm gonna get the servo set up. So I need my tester and a battery. So you can power up the servo. These KST servos are programmable and that'll help us out as well. But for now, we're just gonna use the tester. have the servo here and it's gonna get installed in the wing like this and I'm gonna drive the um, servo to the fold down flat position so it's right there and then I'm gonna get that horn that we prepared and we'll install this the way I want to see it in the fold down position which would be about like that so basically like the top of the servo arm is level with the, the case of the servo right there okay so the servo is ready to go in kinda get it back in the up position the arm and the next thing we're gonna wanna do is install the back brace on the servo. Okay, so I've installed the back brace there and the arms on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this in. Kind of slip the back in. Get some hemostats, might help you out. Kind of got to line the servo up as it wants to fit in the slot. I get the arm out. There we go. I'm going to push the servo forward so it seats in the bearing. And then what, I, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just get the, uh, the pin back in. So again, I'm using some side cutters here to help me hold the pin. And I'm going to push the arm down and deflect the surface to where we think it lines up. go and then once it's started you get a flat head and just kind of help it you don't want to push it all the way in you need to see about two and a half millimeters two millimeters sticking out on the end there and then we got to run our screws back with the torx bits Ok, 
Okay, now we need the small screws on the back. Don't over tighten these, it's very easy to strip these. Just snugs all you need. Um, actually, I've pinched the I've pinched the uh, wire for the aileron. So let's see if we can pull that guy out, loosen everything back up. Make sure everything's definitely clear. Okay, it's all clear there, so we can again tighten up the screws. Again, these are really easy to strip, so the small screws, as soon as you start filling them, get snug stop okay there we go now if I zoom out I'll try to show you what kind of throw we get here with the with the flap with that shorter horn so we'll go full down plenty of down travel tons of up travel I'm not getting 90 degrees down flap, I'm getting about 75, 80, but that's perfectly fine. Because this, this is not an F3J or a F5J model. So there we go, very happy with that. And I can actually change this, the programming of the servo if I need to, to match it up with the other side. I can program the centering of the servo to get both flaps exactly in the same position. So the aileron is pretty much the same, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do that one next. Now we're on the aileron, and I've gone ahead and pre-fit the new horn to the X10 Mini. Again, putting it on and off a bunch of times with some grease on the spline. And on this one, since this is the shortest horn now, we have to get this um, in the IDS tray first, and the arm hooked up, before... Um, we can get the uh, servo installed so we'll just get the arm on there get the pin and we'll try to get the pin where we need it there we go again you don't want to push this pin all the way in I've put it in a little too far so I'm just using the exacto knife to get it flush with this side of the horn there. And now hopefully we'll be able to get our servo in without much fuss. We're going to put the back brace back on it. Okay, so oops. Put the brace on backwards. Make sure the brace is going the right direction. Okay. Get, make sure we get under the servo wire and we'll try to get the aileron somewhat centered and we're going to slide the servo forward and we can wiggle the aileron and try to feel where it engages and I think I've already got it engaged okay 
Um, let me plug it back into the tester just to be sure because it could have moved. Okay, it's still looking pretty good. So now we just gotta try to push the servo forward. And if you get a pair of hemostats, what you can do is kind of squeeze the arm and the mounting lug on the IDS frame. And that'll kind of shove it where it needs to go. So I think we're pretty good. We can drive the bigger torque screws in. Again, we don't need to overly tighten anything. Now the smaller screws for the back brace. Once they're barely starting to get snug, that's all you need. That's it. Okay, so we have the short the shortest of the arms on the aileron. And I'll show you what kind of throw we get. So let me zoom out. You see the brake here for the flap and aileron? And I'm gonna just drive the servo. So really, it's still more than enough travel. We could even, if we had a shorter arm, we could use it in this application, but we don't. We've used the shortest one with the kit. Okay, at this point, there's really nothing left to do. I will um, program the aileron servo centers so they are perfectly matched up with the tip at neutral, and then I'll program the flap servos to so that the flap, both flap servos are identical in their travel. And the only other thing I have to do is install the um, plastic covers, but you guys have seen me do that a million times, so I don't have to show you again. So this is basically just a few tips on the uh, Vantage Race or V-Race wing assembly. Um, it's super easy to do, really, really quick. I've, I've done both wings and 45 minutes basically. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It could also be very helpful for other models, not just uh, this particular model. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.